Americans of their own government's criminal actions around the world. Now, Noam Chomsky is, of course, the MIT linguistics professor who famously popularized the concept of manufacturing consent. For years, he's written about how the West uses a propagandistic press to coerce its own citizens and how it uses covert forms of violence to maintain power around the world. Chomsky was overwhelmed with media requests about September 11, so his new book, 9-11, is a collection of interviews that he gave in the following months. Now, interestingly, 9-11 has been a bestseller despite the fact that it's had a total lack of publicity. I met Noam Chomsky in Cambridge to talk about the post-9-11 world and how things have changed since then, but I began by asking him to explain how the war in Afghanistan is an example of how the U.S. is, in his mind, a leading terrorist state. So on October 12th, I guess, a couple of days after the bombing started, uh, Bush publicly announced to the Afghan people uh, that we will continue to bomb you uh, unless your leadership uh, turns over to us people who we suspect of carrying out crimes, although we refuse to give you any evidence. And notice that that's a textbook illustration of international terrorism. Uh, three weeks later, by the end of October, uh, the war aims had changed. Uh, Admiral Boyce, the British defense minister, uh, he uh, uh, informed the Afghan population that uh, we will continue to bomb you until you change your leadership. Well, that's an even more dramatic illustration of international terrorism. It had nothing to do with uh, finding the criminals and uh, bringing them to justice. If the United States is a leading terrorist state, if, as you say, Britain is another example of a terrorist state, how do you distinguish between that kind of what you describe as terrorism and what they are saying, Osama bin Laden, who's a terrorist? Make the distinction. It's very simple. If, if they do it, it's terrorism. If we do it, it's counterterrorism. Uh, that's a historical universal. You go back to Nazi propaganda, see? Most extreme mass murderers ever. If you look at Nazi propaganda, it's exactly what they said. They said they are defending the populations and the legitimate governments of Europe. Well, let's talk about in the Middle East, for example, where Sharon says, we are experiencing terrorist bombings, and therefore we have to uh, have a big operation in the, in the West Bank and, and root out terrorism. And, and people say, hey, you're violating human rights. Yeah, the, what's, this is the 35th year of a harsh, brutal, and vicious occupation supported unilaterally by the United States, constant terror and atrocities. Uh, the, suppose Palestinians say, well, we're under terrorist attack for 35 years, therefore we have a right to carry out suicide bombings. Which is what they say. Do you accept this? Does anybody accept it? Nobody accepts it. All right, then how come everyone accepts the Israeli claim to be doing it, which is a much weaker claim? They are the military occupiers. Those who defend suicide bombing, and there are very few, uh, have not, not, don't have a leg to stand on. Those who defend the Israeli atrocities, including the U.S. government, uh, most intellectual opinion, a uh, good bit of the West generally, yeah, they don't have a leg to stand on either, and, it's, and they have a much weaker position. You asked us after September 11, one of your points was we ought to look in the mirror, we being America or the yeah. West, we ought to look in the mirror at our own. Was that a way of saying, Look, people like bin Laden are angry at us for good reason. No, not, In other words, is there a way to not, justify... That's not what I was saying. The statement of mine that you just quoted uh, is a very conservative statement. Uh, in fact, it was articulated by George Bush's favorite philosopher, Jesus Christ, uh, who pointed out, famously defined the notion hypocrite. Uh, a hypocrite is a person who focuses on the other fellow's crimes and refuses to look at his own. I know that the U.S. has committed atrocities. However, they did oust a more brutal regime, the Taliban. There was that wasn't even a war aim. There that was wasn't even a war aim. It wasn't even a war aim. But is that a moral thing to do? They did get rid of a brutal regime. There fine. was celebration in Canada. Good, fine. I'll let them bomb Israel and get rid of the a brutal regime there. If we want to overthrow the regime of Uzbekistan, now a great favorite, uh, but it happens to be not very different from the Taliban. The way to do it would not be to bomb Uzbekistan, but to support internal democratic forces and let them do it. And that, that there, generalizes around the world. Robert Kaplan, who writes about foreign policy, I spoke to him recently about his book, 
uh, warrior politics. And I, I put some of your points to him. He said, I wish Noam Chomsky had been with me in Romania in the 70s or the 80s. Adult choice of foreign policy is made on distinctions. The argument that Chomsky makes has no distinctions because there's a difference between the quantity and the kind of dictators that America supported and the quantity and the kind of things we went in in communist world for 44 years. Okay, so let's take his example of Romania, Ceausescu, hideous regime, which he forgot to tell you the United States supported. Uh, supported right till the end, as did Britain. So the example that he gave is a perfect example, and it's a small example because we support much more brutal regimes. Does that disqualify but, but, so, the U.S. from no, it their doesn't. intervening it in doesn't. any other way? Ob look, yeah, the Taliban are a terrorist state. That fact doesn't disqualify them from bombing Washington. What disqualifies from doing that is even is even they were Mahatma Gandhi, they shouldn't do it. Nobody except the ultra-right wing jingoists like Kaplan is comparing atrocities by various countries. What honest people are saying is that we should pay attention to our own crimes and stop committing them. This would be true even if we were killing one person, okay? And it's even more true when we're killing millions of people. Do we need a, a, a constabulary, a force, a, a central force. In this case, it's America, America because it's a superpower to sometimes use unjust means in the service of just causes. What are the just causes? What was the just cause in, for example, slaughtering Kurds in southeastern Turkey? What was the just cause? I can, what was the just cause in supporting Suharto uh, when he wiped, when he killed a couple hundred thousand landless peasants in Indonesia? Uh, went on to become one of the biggest torturers in the world and then destroyed, uh, slaughtered a third of the population of East Timor. What was the just cause? What was the just cause when we invaded South Vietnam 40 years ago, ending up killing millions of people, leaving the country devastated, they're still dying from chemical warfare? What was the just cause? Can I continue? Yeah, we were, the just cause for, for people like Kaplan is we did it. Therefore, it's a just cause. You can read that in the Nazi archives, too. Of course, we've had Kaplan on, and there is a raging debate about the just cause of foreign policy. But when we come back, Noam Chomsky says that the U.S. not only blocked Mideast peace and has always done so, it actually escalates the violence. And who are the war criminals guilty? Bush, Clinton, Kennedy, Eisenhower, all of them. Come on back for more Noam Chomsky.